How you guys doing, all right? Thank you so much for having me. My name is Alex. I'm a Jewish person. I'm a Jew. Hello. And I'm a big Jew. Orthodox Jew, observant Jew. I went to big Jewish upbringing. Went to a Jewish uh, school. Went to a synagogue growing up. I went to a Jewish camp, the good kind. <laughs> I remember the first time I was aware of being Jewish. I should have been aware like eight days in, but you're not really around when they... <laughs> I was at a children's birthday party. And not for my circumcision. I mean, like, a different time. <laughs> that would be an awful children's birthday party. If your kid came home and you're like, how was the party? And he was like, there was the worst magician I've ever seen. <laughs> and the goodie bags were fucked. <laughs> I was at a children's birthday party. <laughs> I'm, like, five or six years old. And I reached for a slice of pizza that had some sausage on it. My grandfather was there, and he slapped my hand away, and he said, you can't have that. We're Jewish. <laughs> and I said, what does that mean? And I'll never forget this. He went, it means you'll never be happy. <laughs> and I said, what? And he said, yeah. It means that my dad runs over and he scoops me up because I'm starting to cry already. And he's like, thanks a lot, Ted. Okay, what, what your grandfather, what your mother's father means <laughs> is that you'll, oh God, you'll be part of this tradition of questioning things. And you always want things to be better for people who are less fortunate than you. And you'll never be satisfied with a status quo that's unacceptable. But I'm a child and he's an academic, so I'm not buying any of this. So I start crying hysterically and I went, I don't want to be Jewish! And my grandfather, still there, just went, and that's the most Jewish thing there is. <laughs> By the way, I have a lot of love for my grandfather, but I think, like, it's a tough time to be a young person in the world right now. I think it's a tough time, and here's why. I was writing on a TV show last year, and at the end of the show, when it was canceled, I checked my bank balance on my phone. And on my phone, I saw that I had $5,421, not to brag. <laughs> and this is how little I know about being an adult. I saw the bank balance on the screen, and I thought to myself, with no irony, I should buy a house. <laughs> not a big house, one of those small, $5,000 houses. <laughs> How is any millennial ever gonna own a home? How is any young person ever gonna own a home? It seems impossible and it's made me hate old people. I see a few of you in here tonight. I hate you. Because <laughs> every old person in a city like London or LA or New York is the same. They're like, my house is worth two million pounds, but when I bought it in 1981, I paid 11 raspberries for it. <laughs> young person's like, I have nine roommates! <laughs> One of those is a dog with rabies. We love to get him out, but his name is on the lease. <laughs> and every old person's like, I'm a librarian with a country home in the Cotswolds. Go fuck yourself! <laughs> and then there's criticism of young people. They're like, young people live on their phones. It's the only place we can afford to live. <laughs> By the way, our governments are the oldest governments. Like, the U.S. government has the third oldest government in the world. It's Croatia, Mozambique, the United States, and the U.K. is ninth. The average age of a U.S. politician is dead. <laughs> All of our leaders are crazy old. It's a gerontocracy. John McCain died last year, the guy who ran for president against Obama the first time, and people were like, what a tragedy. <laughs> what? They were like, what a tragedy. Gone too soon. <laughs> no, he should have died 25 years ago. <laughs> John McCain, when he ran for president, was the oldest man who ever lived. 
I'm not kidding, look it up. He's the oldest man who ever lived. Everyone he went to high school with was killed when the meteor hit. <laughs> John McCain is in the Bible. If you open up to the second page of the Bible, there's McCain killing his brother McAbel. He's crazy old. <laughs> enjoy certain television shows. Like, I was watching SpongeBob SquarePants with a younger cousin, two years younger, we love the classics. <laughs> and I'm getting angrier and angrier because I'm watching SpongeBob and I'm thinking, this sponge owns his own pineapple? <laughs> this sponge owns a two-story pineapple? Oh, he must be a banker. He's not a banker. He works in a fast food restaurant. <laughs> and his neighbor works with him in the restaurant, lives in an Easter Island head. That's a listed building. There's no way he can afford that. <laughs> the biggest pride and joy in my life um, is my baby. Um, I, uh, I adopted an elephant a couple of years ago. And it's a one bedroom, so it's a tight squeeze, but <laughs> I love this elephant so much. Her name is Asampu. She's five years old. She lives on the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in Kenya. And I care about this elephant more than anything else in my life. I get weekly emails, and the email two weeks ago was that Asampu was being bullied, and I swear to God I had the thought, am I going to need to go down there? And my friends will show me photos of their kids and talk about their kids. And with no self-awareness, I will pull out photos of Isampu. <laughs> my friend was like, look, this is Gabriel. Gabriel's just like, read a whole book on his own. And I was like, oh, this is Isampu. She can crush Gabriel's skull with a flick of her truck. <laughs> and a couple weeks ago, a friend was like, do you know, uh, Edie just lost her first tooth. And I was like, oh, really? And she's like, yeah. Edie got $5 from the tooth fairy. And I was like, do you have any idea how much Isampu's teeth are worth? <laughs> By the way, here's why uh, I love the UK, and I've come here on and off for five years, and it's the place I started making a living as a comedian, and it's the place that like, I consider a second home. And I really love it here, and some really nice things have happened to me here. The best thing that ever happened to me in London is I bought a pair of shoes on Oxford Street. Here's why it was cool. So I have one foot that's a size 12, and I have one foot that's a size 10 and a half. <laughs> and that is some distance. And I always have to buy size 12s, because you can't buy the size 10 and a halfs and pray. <laughs> so I buy the size 12s, and one foot fits, and the other foot rattles around like a widow in a big house. <laughs> And I walk into this store on Oxford Street. I need new shoes. And I explain the situation. And this guy behind the till just went, oh, that's OK. We'll sell you one shoe that's a size 12 and one shoe that's a size 10 and a half. And I started to cry <laughs> in a men's shoe store. And you could see him, because he's British, so comfortable with emotion. He was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> And I'm like, it is a big deal. I've always felt different. Thank you so much. And he just goes, oh, it's fine, it's fine. And he's ringing me up. And I said, hey, out of curiosity, like, what are you going to do with the orphan shoes? And he said, what? And I was like, what are you going to do with, like, the leftover shoes? And he genuinely said, oh, We'll hold on to them, just in case <laughs> someone with the exact opposite <laughs> situation comes into the shoe store. And I was like, if that happens, you give that guy my number. <laughs> because we are buying shoes together for the rest of our lives. Tom, do you want to learn how to ice skate? Because <laughs> this only works if you're all in, baby. <laughs> My 
favorite thing about the UK. My absolute favorite thing about the UK is Greg's. That is my favorite thing <laughs> that you guys have going for your, Greg's, Greg's the baker. It is so good. Yes. Here's why. Greg's doesn't pretend to be anything else. It knows what it is. You walk in, they're like, hi. <laughs> Welcome to Greg's. What food would you like to eat? <laughs> and you're gross, because you're in a Greg's. So you're like, can I have 12 donuts for a pound, please? <laughs> you're like, yeah, do you want a Diet Coke with that? It is breakfast. <laughs> Here's how Greg's got started. Someone kicked in the door to a board meeting and was like, hey, everybody. Hey, idiots. Let's sell pastries. <laughs> but not good pastries. <laughs> and everyone was like, Greg. <laughs> no one's gonna buy crap pastry. We'll see about that. <laughs> Up is an empire! And he did, and it's a masterpiece. And you're the same as the people who work there. You're unhappy, they're unhappy. You're gross, they're gross. You're not wearing gloves, they're not wearing gloves. <laughs> you guys have been so great. I'm Alex Edelman. Enjoy your evening. Goodbye.